something like that is where you you have the big scars, and see here you have a multiple, you have a fracture here, the fibula. There might be something going on in there. That's not good. <laughs> okay, so that's basically the material, the, all the material that we're going to cover for the class that you're responsible for. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some, some stuff about muscles like the suboccipital muscles, because okay, we didn't really get into that. It's not going to be on the final. You don't need to know it for this class. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is because we did cover it, and I think it's something that's important to, to know. Because uh, one of the, thing, the things I went to at the symposium, one of the guys that was talking about like orthopedic treatment for mm -hmm. cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and such, it's talking a lot about suboccipital muscles and doing kneeling and stuff and working those on there. So I just wanted to make sure that you <laughs> learned these so that, again, this is not something that you're going to be responsible for, but. I just want to cover it so that you'll be aware of it. Uh, yeah, you do need to know that the tie is, is, is his recommendation is to the hamstring. But he did say, at the, what did he say, at the bottom of the leg. So, Right. He was, you know, needs a little school. So basically, the suboccipital would mean what? Below the occipital. Okay. So there's a lot of innervation and reflex and activity that that goes into the suboccipital muscles. Because what you're talking about is what keeps your head orientated towards the horizon. And so that's important. It's like when you're, if you're driving or something, you're starting to get car sick, what do you always do? You want to look at the horizon. If you're on a boat, you start getting seasick. Or something. You want to look towards the horizon. There's a whole vestibular system in your head. It has a lot to do with keeping your head centered, right? You don't walk around, you seem to walk around like this, right? It's not about right. So there's a lot of things in there that there's sensory receptors in the nerves and the nerve endings in the muscles that sense your position and in the joints. It sense to make sure that your head's on, on straight. You know, if you're, if you're if you have something going on like you have scoliosis or spasm into your into your back like that, your head's going to tend to try to right itself like that. Because it's important for your body, for your senses, your vision, and everything to, to have your eyes toward, right, horizontal to the uh, horizon. So basically it's between pretty much between C1 is going to be right here. And C2. So they're all pretty much between the occiput, C1, and C2. So some of them are going to attach to the transverse process, so you're going to have oblique capitis superior, capitis inferior. Okay. And then it's just all these different names that have to do with rectus, meaning it's a straight muscle, and then capitis, meaning that it's going to attach to the skull. And then if it's at an oblique angle, they use the word oblique. But just, you know, like I said, you don't need to worry about all these different names, but just when you hear the word suboccipital muscles, at least now you have a little more of a picture. Um, see, they're underneath these other muscles that we covered, the splenius, the semispinalis, the tesius, things like that. So those other muscles we talked about were more superficial. So this is when you're stripping the other layers away, and those suboccipitals are these small, short muscles that attach either between the occiput and C1 and C2. A lot of times there's a lot of tension in this area. You know, obviously it's uh, GB21 or 20. Somebody count me out on that? 20. Okay, 20, because the one's here and one's there, right? The one that's up here. Okay, so that's right in your suboccipital muscles. And so again, this is a cross section. So then here is like say these are going to be the splenius and other muscles. And so what we're talking about is muscles that are deep in this layer here. They're deep and close up against the spine. Okay. So there they are again. So they're going to basically going to do extension. Right? And then if some are acting individually, they might do lateral flexion or rotation and things like that. 
like that. And the thing is, with what happens a lot of times with posture is that you tend to get this kind of thing going on with your neck, mm -hmm. right? So then these muscles can be tight, like your subux or your SCM. And then if the suboccipital muscles are tight, it's doing this kind of thing. So if those muscles are tight, you're getting this action going on. And so the thing that you can you can do this to help stretch these muscles is if you you retract your head, but don't let your chin go up or down. You want it to go straight back like that. So if you do that, where do you feel it tightening up? Right there in your suboccipital muscles. Okay, because in the the movement in the neck is divided between the upper cervical and lower cervical. Okay, so the upper cervical is occiput C1, C2. And that's when you do that, that's like this, like nodding your head. And when you're nodding your head, if you feel here, where do you feel the motion happening? Is it down here lower in your neck? Or is it pretty much just up at the top? Okay, so that's between your occiput and atlas, a little bit C1, C2. So those suboccipital muscles, if they tighten up, they're doing this kind of thing. So your head jumps forward like that, really tight, so then your muscles are like that. So, does that ever happen when you're spending a lot of time studying? Yes. Right? Either like this, okay? So, is it a good thing to work on this to do some partial exercises like this? And then also moving your shoulders back. So then this is just out of the trail guide. It goes through and talks about all these, each individual muscles. And then doing them as a group. And then when you're palpating them, so you're working right underneath the occiput there. So we can do some of that with palpation. And then quadratus lumborum. 